That's interesting. Okay, three, two, you. Everyone, everyone kind of got that from them. 
Mr. Gross has his little corner back there, and that's kind of his way of, he decorates his space saying, don't talk to me, I'm in my own little world. Um, different perfumes and colognes have different scents that alter the chemicals in your body that give you different feelings, so that would be, <laughs> that would be how the scent works.
red means joy, and it's also their version of pink. So if you had a little boy here, you would dress him in red, that'd be normal. If you took him to China, everybody would look at you here, because it's like dressing him in pink. It also, in for the Korean Buddhists, it means death. They only use red ink to write someone's name when they die, or on the anniversary of their death. So that's awkward when the American teachers use it to write their papers. <laughs> Green for a Native American is femininity. You wouldn't really think about it. It's not very feminine. Colors are kind of neutral. And in Latin America, purple means death, while in Europe it means royalty. So it's the same color, but two very different meanings. <laughs> is the feminine color for Native American Native American. Oh. I raised my hand. Green. Green. What was it? I didn't hear. Green. Green. Give one to Josh, too. Green. 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 Okay, another part of differences between cultures. Some cultures are contact cultures. Like in Southern Europe and Middle East, even if you're just meeting someone, you might go up and kiss them on both cheeks. And in America, that's frowned upon. Um, you also like stand closer together. You can touch while talking. You hold longer and more focused eye contact with someone. And then there's the complete opposite non-contact cultures in Northern Europe and Japan, where when you're holding a conversation, you'll stand farther apart. You have like a bigger personal bubble, like we was talking about. You rarely touch, and eye contact is almost rude. Um, time, you wouldn't think, would differ too much in different cultures, but really, when you think about it, if you're 20 minutes late somewhere, people will think, well, people will judge you. They'll say you're lazy or you don't care. So in different places, they care more. Japan, they are very punctual, time-oriented. Their clocks are very accurate. They have the most accurate clocks in the world. And therefore, like, studies have shown that people in Japan walk faster, just in general, because they want to get places on time. And Indonesia is the opposite end of the spectrum. Their clocks aren't accurate at all, and they walk slower, so they aren't as worried about being punctual. Um, social clocks are different in different places, too. It's like a timeline of what you're expected to do in your life. Like in some places, you can get married when you're 13. In America, the general one that you're expected is when you're 18, you'll graduate high school. 22, you'll graduate college. 25, you'll be married. Um, 25 to 30 kids, and then 60, 65-ish retired, and that just changes from where you are. And then one more thing, monochronism and polychronism are two different things, and they are more individual instead of just cultures in general. Monochronism is like a multitasker, and, um, or not a multitasker, sorry. They just do one thing at a time, they take schedules really serious, and they are like to work by themselves in a polychronism. Josh, the opposite. just a sec, man. Josh, can you go? <laughs> Sorry, Maddie. So Keep right on going. Polychronism is a multitasker, and they like working with many different people, and they have schedules, but they aren't too worried if, if things get altered. All right, decoding and encoding are another form of nonverbal messaging. So if this group was in a circle and they were talking about going somewhere and one person, let's say Maddie, didn't really want to go, she'd look at me, let's say, and say, oh yeah, I'll be there. But if she winked at me, she would be sending me a message telling me that she was lying. And so I would try to be decoding the message that she was sending to me. So if I sent her a message back, that would be her decoding the message I sent her. All right, <clears throat> there are channels of nonverbals. I'm sure everybody knows what the peace sign is. and. <laughs> but you probably, Can't wait to put that in the graduation video. <laughs> you probably don't know what they're called. They're called emblems, and it's all the things like rock on and I love you, whichever one those are. Um, <laughs> illustrators are exactly what it says. It's like illustrating something like you can say it's this big or this small. It's when you use your hands to show something. Effect displays is like your facial expressions, whatever you can do to show someone else or yeah, show someone else what your emotions are. Regulators are like when you're saying something and giving a hand gesture, like Taylor, slow down. Like slow down right now. <laughs> and then adapters are things you do like to make you feel better. Like some people play with their hair and other people just I don't know, like itch their arm. So. <laughs> 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 Like, 
Awesome, nice job. Little golf clap. Yeah,